Uh, we have, again, something new that I think probably many of you have not yet heard of, brand new to our industry. Uh, we have Dan Rome of Beyond Verbal. Dan has come all the way from Israel to talk to you about voice analytics. Uh, Dan uh, studied uh, aeronautic engineering, otherwise known as rocket science at Technion University, and he's a co-founder and the VP of products for Beyond Verbal, and he's gonna talk about this new field of analyzing emotions in vocal tones. And the personal thing about Dan, he looks very calm, he looks very, very uh, so soft and sedate, but he loves uh, adrenaline pumping sports like scuba diving and um, skydiving. So don't let his demeanor fool you. Dan, please. Okay. I want to share with you that a few weeks ago, friends called me and asked me, do I want to come to a football game? So of course, yes, it's an opportunity, let's go out. I'm just out to go out of the door, and my girlfriend calls me, where are you going? I'm saying, to a football game with John. Everything okay? Yes, I'm fine. <laughs> At that moment, I knew I'm in trouble. <laughs> it's not what she said, it's how she said it. And this is what we are going to talk about today. My name is Dan, Dan Marom. I've, in the last 20 years, I've been large communication project for big companies like AT&T and Deutsche Telekom. And for the last six years, I had the opportunity to work, to work on, on something which is much more than technology for me. It's about us as people, how we communicate with each other. And today, what we, I want, want to talk about is how you as market researcher can use an, our technology in order to better understand your customers' hearts and minds. So we'll see how this technology works. We'll go over and see some insightful insights that can be extracted from this technology. And I will also go over a few case studies how this technology is being implemented in the field. Where is the? OK. Uh, this one? How? OK. OK, <clears throat> so when we discuss about moods and attitudes, we need to go beyond the verbs in order to really understand it. Uh, the emotional intonation carries also things about intent, meaning, and emotions. And that's what we're trying to do. So voice is everywhere. We, we today communicate with Siri, Google Voice, our coffee machine will soon speak to us. And today, it's only understand the, what we say and barely. Think what will happen when those machines will be able to understand our moods and then interact with us in a much higher level. What I'm going to do now is to show you how emotional analytics works in life. What we're going to see is a short clip of Steve Jobs that was recorded just one of the last one we did. And uh, we run the track of the voice throughout our machine, and the machine doesn't know it's Steve Jobs. It doesn't know it speaks English. It doesn't know what it speaks about. And it just extracts the emotions. Follow up the, what the mach machine reads. I want you to put special attention to what happens around the middle of the clip and what his, how mo his mood is changing and what our machine reads. You didn't do it in a tablet right away, you did it in the phone. What was the, uh, I mean, did you consider doing a tablet when you did the iPhone or, or was it just a natural progression? The iPhone came out, it was a big hit. I'll actually tell you kind of a secret. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, I actually started on the tablet first. Really? And uh, I had this idea of being able to get rid of the keyboard, type on a multi-touch glass display. And I asked our folks, could we come up with a multi-touch display that I could, we could type on, I could rest my hands on. And, actually, and about six months later, they called me in and showed me this prototype display. And it was amazing. And I gave it to one of our guys. This was in the early 90s. I mean, early, uh, early 2000s. 2000s. And uh, I gave it to one of our other really brilliant uh, UI folks. And he called me back a few weeks later and he had inertial scrolling working. 
and a few other things. Now, we were thinking about building a phone at that time. And when I saw the rubber band inertial scrolling and a few of the other things, I thought, oh, my God, we can build a phone out of this. And I put the tablet project on the shelf because the phone was more important. And we went and took the next several years and did the iPhone. So and then, and when we got our, when we got our wind back and uh, thought we could take on something next, pulled the tablet off the shelf, took everything we learned from the phone, and went back to work on the tablet. So, so what you have seen here is a machine that treads jobs emotions automatically in real time and accurately. A machines that thread emotions. So this is what we are doing today and how it relates uh, to market research. So we believe that this capability is game changer for market research. What we, want, what we think is that measuring emotions is really important for market research. Our technology enables to do it in large scale to quantify those emotions. And once you have this capability, you can easily measure consumers' emotions again and again in repeated process and uh, cost, uh, costly and gain valuable insights. So we all know that today, today that uh, decision making is basically emotionally by nature. And we know it because we researched it for 20 years. We have processed almost a million segments of voice on over, on over 30 languages. We secured five granted patents and won major awards. This year, Gartner nominated us as a cool vendor for human-machine interface. And it, we tested it in the feeds, in market research, contact centers, and other domains. So the world is changing. We have today smartphones. What uh, smartphones and wearable gives us is the ability to have a good quality microphone everywhere. And that enables us to collect good quality voice samples anytime, anywhere. Together with cloud processing, it's a very powerful combination. And what we've done earlier this year, we introduced Moody's. Moody's in the, uh, is an app that you can download for, from uh, uh, the, the store and then uh, process it, we use it for various market research. Let's move quickly forward. You are invited to download the app and use it. Let's see some use cases. So here we've done uh, some collaboration with Green Book on IAX Atlanta. We gave people to speak to Moody's, encourage them to speak, them to record others. We measure their emotions. Here you can see a graph where there are different 11, 11 groups of emotions, starting with depressive, embracive, and aggressive aggregated. We aggregated all this data. It's the colored bars. In behind, in the light blue bars, is the aggregated mood of the US to compare with. So we've seen that at IX Atlanta, it was much more embracing. We did a similar study in TEDMED Jerusalem. What you can see is that around lunch, people became much more aggressive in the red curve. And after that, they relaxed. And then they became much more gloomy on the later day of the day. I don't, I, I don't, I'm not sure I'm uh, making my lecture now in the best timing. <laughs> <laughs> Another study that uh, we did, uh, we were invited to take part in a large uh, consumer product in a shark tank, where top executive got emotional sensor for us, and after each session, they recorded themselves speaking the verdict on the session. We collected all the data and compared it. What you can see here is that on the left, a very cool, good session compared to the right one. And if you look down, you can see that the cool session, the good one, was much more creative, embracive, and with no anger in compared to the worst one. So another case study that we are doing is with a large consumer product, uh, checking brand and experience studies. In this case, they selected to do uh, two different uh, regions, Europe and Asia Pacific, two different languages. None of them is English. And uh, 
we are technology companies, so we work together with researchers. They collect the data, gave it to us. We are processing the voice, summarize it, give some insight based on our knowledge about our technology, and then they conclude all the conclusion and send the report. So the cause of this ratio is to find implicit insight about brand equity. So to conclude, we believe that emotions are very important for market research. I would like to speak a lot about more about it. Contact us and we'll be happy to speak about it more. Thank you for your attention. It's been emotional. Yeah, thank you, thank you. All right. I bet there are a few questions about this new technique. Uh, who wants to ask? Yes, there in the back, please. Emotional. Oh. Hey, can your uh, software differentiate between the emotional response someone may be having to the situation versus the emotions in the response, uh, say they're describing their feeling towards a brand, uh, but they're a bit nervous, you know, they, they don't typically participate in interviews. So would you be able to uh, differentiate those emotions, the emotion in describing the brand versus the more visceral response they're having to the situation? Voice is un unconscious. So whether if you are disturbed by something and your emotions are disturbed, so they are disturbed. And this is what we are measuring. So uh, you need to find the right use it scenario in order to test and make the most of our technology. Yes, we have one in the, in the very back there. Uh, Actually, we're following the microphone. Sorry, gentleman in the back. I have two questions. First, on the example of Steve Jobs, what, what was the measurement actually look? I mean, we couldn't really actually see what it was. So what were you actually measuring? And then secondly, what are you using for sort of validation benchmarks? What are your points of reference? Okay. I think the second question is uh, the most important. So what we are doing, we're constantly checking ourselves. So we work with psychologists, we uh, hire a few to work with us, we work with universities and, and professors to validate, externally validate our technology. It's in process now of writing papers. We use crowdsourcing and voting of people who get our answers in order to cross it. And all this together, when it's crossed, then we have our reference database that whenever we change, improve our technology, we can compare it to. Hi. Um, I'm curious, what is the range or number of discernible emotions that you have now? And has that become more nuanced uh, as you've gone on? OK. We started with very detailed emotions, uh, over 400 different sentences that describe complex emotion. Almost everything there is there. And there is a theory. and why it works and how it works. And then we found out that in the field, it's very hard to work and make decisions based on so many inputs. So we have aggregated first to 21 groups, then to 11 groups. In some cases, we use seven groups of emotions. We have additional algorithms that measure uh, valence versus arousal. And that's in the five level. So there are different measurements that we use, and depends on the implementation in the field, we can walk and see what is uh, mo most appropriate to use. All right. Great questions. Thank you, Dan. <laughs>